Have you ever been curious how part of the sky gets dark through the Hubble telescope? Furthermore, when scientists applied the James Webb Space Telescope in the same spot, they saw a faint red haze. However, it was a far-off and occult-like dusty galaxy. This discovery is a big deal considering it helps us to learn more about the ways that the universe has changed over time. We'll do a deep dive, find out why it's important, and try to answer some intriguing questions about this distant galaxy, like where it came from, why it's so dusty and red, and what will become of it as time passes. Don't vanish yet to discover more. The first thing we must comprehend about Aztec 71 is the type of galaxy and how it is unique among other galaxies in the universe. We also need to measure some of its attributes, such as mass, brightness, redshift, and color in the process. These traits may reveal some of the history, setting, and possible future of the galaxy. Astronomers leverage the James Webb Telescope's near-infrared camera NearCam, which is capable of taking images of the sky at various wavelengths and use these to quantify this information. They can come up with its temperature, composition, and distance in the galaxy by comparing its brightness with the different filters. This method, known as photometry, is one of the major tools that scientists use for galaxy research. The mass of that galaxy was measured to be around 50 billion times that of the Sun, and the data from photometry suggested the luminosity of that galaxy to be as much as 500 trillion times that of the Sun. This makes it similar to some of the most extreme dust-obscured galaxies in the universe, or sub-millimeter galaxies, whose primary emission wavelengths range from sub-EMMM. A redshift of 5.7 discovered by the photometry suggests that it is also very far away from us, just like the galaxy. This data tells us that the universe at that time was only 7% of its current age, or approximately 1 billion years old, when the light from the galaxy left the galaxy. Thus, in a way, this is a sign that the galaxy is very red, because the light is stretched out because of the universe's expansion. The galaxy in question is actually one of the reddest ones in the whole Cosmos web study, a broad study of the full Cosmos field, which is more than 10 times the size of the full moon and covers around two squares degrees. Additionally, the photometry showed that this galaxy is extremely dim in wavelengths that are visible to Hubble and other optical telescopes, visual and near-infrared. Thus, we can assume that the galaxy is rich in dust, with most of the light being blocked by the dust grains in the intergalactic medium. The dust grains in the galactic center absorb the starlight and re-emit it in far infrared and sub-millimeter wavelengths, which made them visible for the first time with the SCUBA-2 and ALMA instruments. Nonetheless, the scientists could not measure its recession velocity or disclose its form. But the Webb telescope could do that, since it could detect the real-time optical light of the galaxy, which is the light that the galaxy emits in the visible spectrum before it is redshifted by the cosmos. It can give out the important details about the galaxy's stellar attributes, for example, age, metallicity, and star formation rate. Since Webb's NER cam can see at longer infrared wavelengths, which can better penetrate the dust, it is far higher in sensitivity and resolution compared to Hubble and other optical telescopes. The galactic aspect of this galaxy, which is the most puzzling, is that despite its undetectability with optical observatories, it is still detectable with submillimeter and deep infrared instruments. In order to solve the problem, we must generally know the physical processes that make the galaxy dusty and red, as well as how they influence the galaxy's appearance at different wavelengths of light. The main reason that it is so dusty and red is that it is undergoing a very rapid creation of stars, which is usually referred to as a starburst. A starburst is a stage when a galaxy experiences a spike in its star-forming activity sometimes reaching a rate which is hundreds or thousands of times higher than the normal one. It may be triggered by diverse processes including mergers, gas ejection, or feedback, and it can be manifested in different ways, such as outflows, enrichment of the intergalactic medium, or the inhibition of star formation. This galaxy is bursting with stars at the moment. Therefore, the number of new, very massive and bright stars is very high. They are copious emitters of ultraviolet and optical light, 
which can be detected by Hubble and other optical telescopes. Therefore, this radiation is also very energetic, being able to ionize and heat the gas and dust that exists around the star. In the clouds and dust clouds, a dense ring is created that locks the galaxy and acts as a screen, blocking the light from the stars. This explains the reason we can't see the galaxy even through optical telescopes. The dust grains and gas clouds not only stop the light but also re-emit it at far infrared and submillimeter wavelengths, which can be detected by the JCMT, SCUBA-2, and ALMA instruments. The longer and colder wavelengths will easily penetrate through the clouds. This allows astronomers to observe using their submillimeter and far infrared telescopes. Gas and dust clouds in space are affected by different cosmic activities and are also influenced by the constant expansion of the universe. The universe is always growing and stretching, which is a fundamental process shaping the cosmic landscape. Galaxies, like Aztec 71, exist in this changing environment and the light they emit goes through a transformative journey. The universe's expansion is a key player in this cosmic story. Light, which acts as a messenger in space, travels across huge cosmic distances and meets the constantly expanding space. This expansion causes the wavelengths of light to stretch, creating a phenomenon called cosmological redshift. As a result, the originally shorter wavelengths of emitted light now appear longer and shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. Aztec 71, located far from us, becomes a fascinating example in the cosmic drama. The light coming from this distant galaxy shows a clear sign of cosmological redshift, making it look more red. Understanding Aztec 71 is tough because it's both extreme and rare. The combination of complicated astrophysical processes and the universe's expansive nature makes it not only hard to find, but also challenging to thoroughly study. In our effort to grasp the mysteries of the cosmos, Aztec 71 highlights the intricate dance of cosmic forces shaping galaxies in our vast and always changing universe. Let us now look at how this galaxy evolved and grew, as well as how it compares and contrasts with other types of galaxies seen in the cosmos. One probable explanation is that it is the consequence of a merger of two or more smaller galaxies, a violent process in which galaxies collide and combine to form one giant galaxy. A merger can trigger a starburst due to the compression of gas and dust, resulting in their collapse and formation of new stars. By killing ancient stars and releasing their metals into the intergalactic medium, it can also produce a great deal of dust. That's why this galaxy is so massive and brilliant, because it contains the mass and luminosities of merging galaxies together. Another explanation for how this galaxy started and expanded is that it was caused by gas extrusion from the intergalactic medium. Gas secretion happens when a galaxy draws and absorbs gas from the intergalactic medium. It has the potential to cause a starburst by delivering fresh fuel to the galaxy, allowing new stars to develop. It can also generate dust by attracting dust from the intergalactic medium or generating dust from metals generated by young stars. We too can explain why our galaxy is so large and bright. The James Webb Space Telescope just revealed a mind-blowing picture that's turning the science world upside down. This incredible image is changing what scientists believed about the universe. It's not just a cool picture, it's making us rethink everything we thought we knew about space. The debate among scientists is finally settled, thanks to Webb's latest snapshot. Get ready for a whole new way of understanding the cosmos. The age and expansion rate of the universe is a big mystery for scientists to unlock. The dispute about the approach to the determination of these values and the crisis of cosmology are the result of the different methods used for this purpose. Cosmology is the discipline that investigates the birth, architecture, and future of the universe. The most accepted concept is the Big Bang Theory, which asserts that about 13.8 billion years ago, the universe commenced its expansion. The pace of this expansion is captured by the Hubble constant. There are two ways to measure the Hubble constant, local measurements of stars and supernovae, as well as early universe measurements of the cosmic microwave background, CMB, which is the picture of the universe 380,000 years after the Big Bang. 
It had a start when those methods gave different Hubble constant values. The neighborhood measurements indicate that the expansion is more rapid than what the observations from the CMB suggest. This does not rule out the possibility of new physics being discovered or the possibility that there is an error in the measurements. The James Webb Space Telescope was supposed to be a remedy to this issue by providing more accurate observations. Despite that, the first data has contributed more confusion than clarity, which has provided additional data that doesn't easily fit into the previous models. Theories of the universe have changed as new observations turned out not to be in accordance with the existing models. The same as the recognition of the cosmic microwave background in 1965, which was in support of the Big Bang Theory, the current crisis could lead to the adjustments to our knowledge of the universe based on new data. Cosmology, which is the study of the universe's beginnings and its transformation, encounters a new challenge that has been dubbed the SA tension. This is the challenge of understanding why and how things are distributed in space, which helps us to comprehend the universe's shape and its history. Conceive the universe as a patchwork quilt, with some areas being the busiest with galaxies and the others as the empty spaces. The measuring systems adopted by scientists vary, so they develop a phenomenon called SA tension. Another way to see the bending of light around objects is by looking at distant things and the way their light curves around the bigger objects. It assists in mapping out dark matter, an invisible stuff that is similar to gravity, but is undetected. We do it by studying the afterglow of the Big Bang, which is known as the Cosmic Microwave Background, CMB. This light has been going for a very long journey, and thus it is carrying information from the early universe. Nevertheless, the CMB imprints are more uniform than what we can see by bending a light under our telescope. The fact that they are a bit different is the one that makes me feel confused. Scientists are working on similar mystery-solving processes about dark energy and dark matter. Such challenges make scientists more inventive, and they develop better tools and useful ideas to investigate the universe. They employ such a computer as Flamingo to understand the SA tension. This is like comparing various styles of music. They are different, but can be categorized as music. This is an important step in order to address the large questions about why the universe exists and what is happening now. Let's now explore how scientists are working on and trying to understand the universe's expansion and the pieces of the picture that are causing them a headache. In the past, people had the perception that the sky circled the Earth. It was with Copernicus and Galileo's proposal that the Sun is the center of the solar system and that Earth and other planets orbit the Sun. It was the change in the way humans looked at the world. In the 20th century, Einstein brought more changes with his theory of general relativity, which is different from the previously accepted view that space and time are separate, with one being the structure called space-time. It was Einstein's thinking that provided the basis for a universe that is ever-expanding. Edwin Hubble viewed distant galaxies that were moving away, thus fueling the Big Bang Theory. First, it was assumed that gravity would retard this expansion. However, in the 1990s, astronomers found the universe was not just expanding, but accelerating the expansion. Therefore, it resulted in the hypothesis of dark energy, a hidden force with a repulsive effect that accelerates the universe's expansion. Now, onto our current puzzle, the political SA tension. It is the conflict of where matter is located widely in the cosmic web, which looks like a foam with galaxies connected along filaments. Scientists then measure the clumpiness of these objects by employing different techniques. For instance, a researcher can be observing the CMB which is a picture of the early universe after the Big Bang. The other has to do with watching galaxies in the current day and how light curves around them, relatively speaking, known as gravitational lensing. These two ways project the universe as being bumpy from a different perspective. The Flamingo Project, a supercomputer simulation, incorporates data from the cosmic microwave background and galaxy observation to develop a detailed virtual universe model. The objective is to find out, considering the laws of physics we know, could the early universe have developed into the one that we see today? 
Flamingo attempted to describe the universe using both dark and ordinary matter, which was a heavy step as the latter was not included in the previous simulations that much. It is similar to the attempt to understand how a car works by only examining its skeleton without paying attention to the engine, seats, or wheels. The reason behind the discrepancy between the universe's rate of expansion and the clumpiness detected by the CMB and local observations can still be unresolved by Flamingo, even if it were able to create galaxies similar to the Milky Way. Such a discrepancy triggers the search for explanations. Some propose the fact that we may need to invent new physics or laws in order to explain what we observe. Others claim that our measurements and the theory of dark energy might be wrong. The fact that the SA tension is a classic puzzle of the universe is the fact that there is the universe at the center. In the face of our far-reaching telescopes and simulations, we are still looking over the edge of the cosmos. Science is such a wonderful journey. It is endless. For each question we answer, a new discovery is made, and every experiment and simulation brings us one step closer to unraveling the universe's main story. The mystery of dark energy is not only a challenging scientific issue, but it also reminds us of how little we know about the universe as we look up in awe and wonder at what the sky will be unveiling for us next. Theories of the universe have developed over the course of a series of discoveries and revolutions in thought, which have been the foundation for progressive understanding. Let's then tread on this cosmic discovery journey and view how the perspectives have changed, and especially the new observations which have come up for us. In the past, the Greeks came up with a geocentric model, locating Earth at the center of the universe, which was approximately the smaller one. It was a simple thing to say, but it was not true. In the 16th century, it was the time when Copernicus came up with a heliocentric model, placing the Sun at the center of our solar system, which perfectly fitted the tracks of the planets. Newton was the 17th century genius who formulated the laws of motion and universal gravitation, a theory that worked flawlessly in predicting the path of the celestial bodies within our solar system and is the basis of classical physics. In the 1920s, a discovery by Edwin Hubble that galaxies are going away in space led to the assumption of the expansion of the expansion of the universe and the replacement of the static universe idea by the Big Bang Theory. Tools like the Hubble Space Telescope improved our cosmic measurements, but a puzzle emerged, the Hubble tension. The Hubble constant was the one that was measured using two independent methods, and the result was different for each one, which confused us. The other problem, the contradiction of the SA tension, is the disagreement in measuring the universe's cosmic density. The James Webb Space Telescope added more complexity, revealing galaxies more spread out than expected. Efforts like the Flamingo Project aim to align models with observations, but a mismatch persisted. This challenges our universe models, hinting at a potential shift in our theoretical foundations. These challenges are not setbacks but guideposts toward deeper understanding. Each anomaly is a clue leading to potential new physics, offering fresh explanations for the cosmos. Science's self-correcting nature allows us to refine theories and our view of the universe with each discovery. What do you think about this discovery? Let us know in the comments. Now, since you have watched until this point, like subscribe and click on the must-see video on your screen. Let's explore some more together.